Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at an expansion, um, but it's also a standalone game for a system that I really, really love. And it all started off with a game called Ronin, which I did cover on the channel oof, a long time ago. When was it? It, was, it must have been early 2022, I think. Um, but yeah, Ronin by uh, Thiago Junges. Brazilian designer. It was, I think, one of the first RPGs that I covered on the channel. Um, camera work and presentation of the video wasn't as good back then. I'm hoping that I've improved since then, but this game really did uh, grab my attention and I had a lot of fun playing with it and it kind of uh, started me really looking at solo RPGs. So this was, this was something big for me and I think for the channel as well. Now, that was in 2022 early 2022 and in that video I mentioned that I could see this game or this sort of mechanic system being used for other sort of genres and I mentioned things like Native American, Greek, Aztec, how that game system of Ronin could be used in other things and later on that year there was another game which was brought out with that system unfortunately I did miss the Kickstarter but I did purchase it as soon as it came out, and that was Notorious, uh, a science fiction version of Ronin with a little bit of extra meat to the bone. Heavily influenced by Star Wars, I must admit, but that adds to the charm. Now, back then, uh, I played this a lot and I was planning to do a video, but I kind of promised another creator that I wouldn't put a video up until they had... Um, and then I kind of forgot about it and other projects <laughs> other projects came along, you know how it goes. But I have played this a lot. I've had a lot of fun with this. And then um, in 2023, it was announced that there was going to be an expansion. And this time I did manage to get on the Kickstarter. <laughs> I did remember. Um, and that was for Outsiders. Now, this is a standalone expansion. It has a number of things that you can use with the sort of first part, the Notorious. It has six new nomads. It has a bunch more um, personalities, planets, uh, villains, species, factions. Um, and it also has a new game mode called the Trilogy, uh, which is what I'll be doing after this little this little video here, I will be doing a trilogy for you guys. Now, the trilogy essentially is that you follow a nomad through three stories. First is Notorious, second is Outsiders, and the third is a combination of the two. Makes for a very interesting mini campaign, a sort of three-stage story. So, I'll be doing that after this. Um, what else? But you don't need Notorious to play this game. This is a standalone. It has all of the basic rules. It has all of the things you need, all the tables that you need. Um, one thing I need to make clear is that the tables here are different to Notorious. So you have a new batch of encounters, a new batch of locations, a new batch of species, etc., etc. So um, combining the two together, you have double the fun. So... What I'm going to be doing now is creating a character, and I'm going to be creating a character with one of the new Nomad races. And after that, in the next video, we shall start the trilogy. So, without further ado, let us create our character to start our trilogy. Right, we are about to start the character creation now. Uh, we are going to be using the Outsiders book to create the character because we have six new nomads, bounty hunters, in here. Now, I did print these books in a spread format, as you can see. Um, the notorious book actually came with a proper spread format in the files the outsiders did not it only came in like a normal full page version so i just used my like printer settings to print two pages per sheet but because it's not an actual proper uh, sort of 
spread format, the the pages are a little bit smaller. I do apologize. Um, but yes, in the Outsiders expansion or book, um, everything's different. So we've got six new Nomad types. And I'm sure you guys, or maybe some of you guys, will have watched some notorious videos on the YouTube already. So you should be familiar with the Nomad types here. The armor, the brute, the assassin, the bot. Um, I'm sure you guys are familiar with this, but um, in these books, Notorious and also Outsiders, we do have different species tables. We do have different personalities, obviously different planets and everything else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my character using outsiders so i'm going to be using one of the new nomads with the new races or species with the new planets and everything well maybe not the planets because i'm going to be doing a trilogy and the trilogy is it's a new way of playing the game com combining both the original notorious and the new outsiders and it's here now, I will be going through all of the rules as we create the character and as we play the game. I will be going through everything that we're doing, so there's no need to have like a special overview of all the rules. Uh, maybe you guys, maybe quite a few of you guys have already seen videos on Notorious, so you probably know how the game works already. Or if you've watched my Ronin videos, you should, know, you should have a good idea about how the game plays. But this is not exactly the same as Ronin. It does have a bit more flesh on the bones. It is a slightly different game, but it really does have the same, the same foundations and the same sort of structure. Anyway, we're going to be doing Trilogy, which means Game 1 is going to be using the Notorious book. But like I said, I'm going to be creating an outsider character. The second game, or the second target acquisition... We'll be using Outsiders, and then the third one is a combination of both. Again, watch the videos. As I play through, I'll explain everything that's going on. Um, I th as far as I can tell, the reactions are the same in both books. So, speak, threaten, attack, and recruit. I can't actually see any differences. There may be, I think there are some differences in the in the, the relevant tables, like for example here the assets, I think these are different from Notorious. Right, so first thing we need to do is actually create our Nomad. We've got a D6 roll here to see which one it is, or we can select. Um, gotta be honest, reading through, uh, the duo doesn't, doesn't really appeal to me. Gotta be honest. The duo is this one here. You're kind of like playing twins. Now, another thing. Um, uh, I, don't, I, I don't recall this being highlighted very much in the Notorious videos that I've seen. But the diagram here is not specifically your character. This is just one example. Because you, ro you are actually rolling separately for your species. So you may not be a fungoid. Yeah? Um, but yeah, but the... The Duo Nomad doesn't really appeal to me. So Sod's Law is that's going to be the one I roll up. <laughs> but let's see. Right, so the first thing we need to do is to actually roll up what type of Nomad. Now, I'm going to be writing down the details on the character sheet here. Um, before I start the playthrough, before I start the first mission, I'll probably tidy it up a little bit. I'm going to be scribbling stuff down with pens and pencils. Uh, they do have a fillable PDF, which I may use in between the missions. I may use an update. Uh, the game also does have a lot of sort of internet generators and, and uh, tools that you can use. You can find these uh, when you purchase the product. Uh, you'll be getting like a, a document which has um, web links to all the different generators target generator, um, exploration generator, destination generators, all those things. But please be warned, at the time of recording, they seem to still only be for 
notorious, not for outsiders. I don't know if the generators are going to be updated to also include the outsiders or whether there's going to be a separate set. I don't know. At the moment, I when I purchased this, I didn't get a list of on sort of online tools like we did with Notorious. Just a heads up. Um, so yeah, let's just roll and see what we get. So the game, you're going to be using 2D6 for pretty much everything. Uh, it's, sometimes it's better to have two colors so you can designate which one's first, which one's second, because on some of the tables you need to identify a first and a second, what we call a D66 table. But in this case, we're only rolling a D6, so I'm going to roll. Let's choose the black one. We get a six. We are going to be playing the veteran. Yep, that's pretty typical. I'm an old git, so yeah, we're playing we're playing the old git, the veteran. So that will go under I think profile. So dum, dum, dum. we are playing the veteran. Okay, at least it's not the duo. Now some of you guys may like playing the duo. Up to you. Up to you. Right. So we're playing the veteran. Okay, so now we've got to record the nomads information on the sheet. So the nomads information is all this stuff here. Now, like I said, I'm probably going to write all the details, uh, all the sort of nitty gritty, all the descriptions and stuff off camera. Uh, but let's have a look and see. So the veteran. Your advanced, <laughs> your advanced age and jaded attitude. Yep. Yep, that's me. Hide a wily survival instinct and nagging fear of what happens when you finally retire. Sorry, I think I knocked the camera just there. Just make sure. Yeah, everything's okay. Right. Um, uh, what else? What else? What else? Success often lies in knowing your opponent's weaknesses to defeat the odds with trusted weapons and an earned confidence. Right, so a quick glance here. Okay, so in terms of the load, loadout and in terms of the bonuses we get, this actually reminds me of one of the other nomads from the previous book. Yeah, the uncanny. The uncanny was like this mist. I think it was like a mystic, like the Jedi kind of thing. Um, and yeah, he got sort of better bonuses against the, a lead or target which are like your bosses that you're going to be fighting and finding. And the veterans, kind of the same kind of thing, has better bonuses versus leads or targets. Okay. Oh, another thing I want to point out is that with these new nomads, they also have like a special rule as well as the standard loadout bits. So, for example, if we look at one of the ones from Notorious, you've got your ranged weapons, you've got your melee weapons, and you've got your outfit, and that's pretty much it. But with the new Nomads in Outsiders, you've also got some kind of little special ability or one special rule. So let's have a look here. Right, uh, ranged, old reliable, long barreled laser rifle, okay. Plus two attack, plus three pl uh, versus lead or target, okay. Melee, the gift, a spike ended staff. Plus two attack, plus three versus leader. Okay, so ranged and melee is essentially the same. Outfit, dated armor, vision enhancing visor, and guild medals, giving me a plus two defense. So, defense allows you to ignore um, a sort of an attack against you. If you roll the when you roll the dice, if you sort of fail and the enemy would hit you. Your defense allows you to ignore them, and at the end of every combat, it kind of refreshes. But, as I mentioned just now, outsiders, the new nomads, have these special rules. I don't know whether it's... Be I don't know. Is it because the equipment's not as good? Possibly. Possibly. Right, what have we got here? One last job. Ignore the first defense you lose when fighting a lead or target. If you're defeated by a target... Your game ends immediately. <laughs> so, okay, so if I'm unlucky, the trilogy is not going to be a trilogy. <laughs> because um, in a lot of situations, like with Ronin, the 
Uh, the game is actually quite difficult to die yeah, in terms of completely failing the game. The game's Ronin and also Notorious with Outsiders. It, it, it normally gives you a way to sort of uh, survive and come back, but with a penalty, with some kind of injury or some kind of loss. Maybe you lose a weapon or something, uh, something along those lines. Um, but you know me, I did die when I was doing the Ronin. <laughs> Um, but we'll see how it happens. We'll see what happens. Right. So I will write down the info here off camera. What else have we got here? Origin. Consider how this influences your attitude to others. So again, we've got to roll a d6. What do we get? We had a one. Here we go. You were once the most feared nomad in the guild. But the galaxy's moved on while you've grown old in semi-retirement. Okay. So I used to be well-known, well-feared, but now I'm kind of like your typical Sylvester Stallone movie, where you've been out of the game for a while and people are coming after you. Um, okay. So maybe that affects how I see things and how I deal with people. Maybe, or maybe I'm kind of out of touch. Where... The, the sort of young generation, the younger uh, nomads, uh, kind of make jokes behind my back where I'm the, I should I should retire and leave it to the young ones. I'm not suitable anymore. I'm old news, old tech kind of thing. I think this was also in what was that movie? Deep Impact was it? Deep Impact, where the um, spaceship crew were making fun of. Oh, God, what was his name? Sturgeon? Was his name Sturgeon or Spurgeon or something? Yeah, but maybe that's the kind of origin that we, that we kind of have here. Now, these games, you can play sort of two ways. You can play arcade or you can play story. Arcade is basically you just go rolling dice, following the prompts. You know? uh, the story version is where you kind of play the game, but you're also writing or creating a, a deep story as you go. Um, so something like a... A notebook will be useful for that. In, in here, I'm just making a note to help me do the uh, editing and to do the little graphics and stuff and, and the sort of um, notes and stuff I normally do in my videos. Uh, but also in terms of helping me to remember what to write on the character sheet afterwards. Um, but yeah. So I'll probably be doing somewhere in the middle. I won't be doing like a full-blown journaling, story-driven and story-creating version of the game. Um, it will be um, arcade with story added. Right, next we have to generate a scar, D6. A five. You've spent a lot of time with the Mystic Coven and your staff is recognised as their signature weapon. Ooh, so maybe the staff is not just plain materials. Maybe it has some kind of internal circuitry where it, it reacts with I don't think it's the force I'll have to have a quick look at the mystic coven but it kind of reacts with that mystic energy um, yeah that, that that could that could work and is recognized as their signature weapon okay so people may actually mistake me as a member of the mystic coven at first glance, at first meeting. That could be good and bad, <laughs> depending on who's on the planet I'm going to be going to. And lastly, we have the trigger. How this influences your choices. We get, we get another one. Yep, here we go. Uh, you have a long history with Husker's Corsairs and were responsible for killing their previous leader. Husker's Corsairs is one of the new, uh, one of the new factions. Husker's Corsairs, allied with the Targ Cartel. Hmm. Okay. Now again, that could be a good thing or bad thing, depending on on how the the current faction's members regarded the previous leader. I mean, they could be. Angry or happy about it? Maybe as we play the game, maybe certain encounters, certain things we find can actually 
let me know. Um, or I could use an oracle to kind of make the, the decision. Maybe that would work. Now, uh, I don't think Notorious has an oracle system, but they're, they're fairly simple. I mean, the, the most basic oracle simple, uh, system is basically you roll a d6, on a 1 to 3 it's no, on a 4 to 6 it's yes, with a 1 being really no and a 6 being really yes, you know, things like that. So, um, okay, so here's the question for this the basic oracle. Um, are the current Huskers Corsairs happy that the previous leader was killed? So one to three, no, four to see, six, yes. No, they're not happy. Ah, oh, okay, so that's a negative reaction. Oh dear, okay, so the Huskers Corsairs could be, well, they will be enemies if I was responsible for killing their previous leader because they're not happy about it. Um, okay, so it looks like I've got some potential enemies and some potential friends. So friends could potentially be the Mystic Coven and enemies could be the Huskers Corsairs. Oh dear. Right, that is the Nomad data or the Nomad information. Again, I'll transfer the information into here. What else do we need to do at this point? Uh, set favor and motivation to two. So favor and motivation to two each. Notoriety is zero. Again, it's very similar to the Ronin method. Ronin had three different stats, but essentially they, they kind of work the same way. Um, now, to, to find leads and the targets, we kind of need to increase our notoriety, which is, starts off at zero. So we're gonna to have to find ways to raise the notoriety. This can happen when you do events during exploration or your destinations. So I've gotta keep an eye on that. And then at the end, when we try to find out how well the story ends in terms of you know the capturing the target, you take your motivation and multiply by two and add to your favor. So all three stats are useful. The notoriety is useful for finding the leads and the targets, which is how you kind of win the game. But your favor and motivation are gonna determine how well you succeed. Now, with a trilogy, what you're gonna be doing at the, at the end of the first two stories, the first two parts, so the Notorious one and then the out, uh, Outsiders one, you take or you keep a, keep a note of, of your final value, yeah, your final epilogue value. And then when you finish the trilogy, when you get to the end of the third mission or the third target, you will add up all three of those values at the end to find your trilogy epilogue, your overall ending. Right. Now, if I remember correctly, when I did the Ronin, when I did the Ronin videos, I don't think I had a very good ending. <laughs> but yes, we start off with two favor, zero notoriety, and two motivation. Right, let me go back to the page. Right. So we've got to make notes of that. Mission suite, starting equipment, okay. Right, now, once we've done that, now we can generate our species and name. And the way that this works is that you roll uh, 2d6 to determine your species type. And then you can either choose or roll a d6 to find your name. Um, again, you can select if you want to, but we like doing things random, don't we? So, we are going to be a 6. Now, again, I'm using the uh, outsiders tables for this. Uh, you can quite easily just use the ones in no, um, Notorious. Um, they are different, so you can pick and choose. You could probably even just put them together. Uh, one to three is this one of these, and four to six is one of these. But I'm just using the new one because, you know, there's not many videos about the new one yet, so we're trying to cover as much as we can. So I got, what did I get? A six. Uh, a Cuda. I'm fish-like. Great. 
I'll probably look like some something out of Innsmouth. All right, so I'm Kuda, fish-like. Um, <laughs> uh, species. I'm going to write this down. I can write this down here because it's not going to change. Kuda. Kuda. Fish-like. Oh, great. I mean, well, I mean, sharks are fish, aren't they? So, maybe they look like a shark. I think I actually got some figures of some, uh, some like, shark, humanoid shark figures. I think it's from the Wrath of Kings game. But, no, this isn't, this isn't a miniatures game. So, uh, Kuda, fish-like. Now I've got to roll for now. I'm going to roll random. I'm going to roll random. I get a four. One, two, three, four. Lox Gill. Um, okay. <laughs> All right, registered name. Lox Gill. Short and easy to remember, hopefully. Right, that is my species and my name. Next up, we have personality. Now, again, it's a different table to the one in Notorious. And again, if you have both the books, you can pick or roll randomly to see which one you want to use. But again, I'm going to be using the Outsiders one. Personality, vain, cocky, arrogant. Over here we have dedicated, intense, and zealous. So what you do is you roll a d6 and then you pick one of the one of the personality types that's there. Um, all right, so we're rolling and we get another four. Talkative, charismatic, and witty. Now I've got to pick one of those and then I've got to pick one of the questions underneath answer the question to kind of develop my background um what personality should i have talkative charismatic and witty um i mean being charismatic would help role playing as i speak possibly even to threaten people that i meet or aliens or whatever that i meet witty Humor, talkative. I think I think charismatic would possibly work. Um, maybe maybe I'm playing a character that would prefer to sort of talk their way out of situations rather than just fight all the time. Because, and I'll go back to the to the other book for this. Let's just put that there. If you look under the guild code. It says here, only kill when necessary. It's a blade, not a hammer. Nomads also don't fight nomads. So they're kind of saying, you know, don't kill everybody. Just sort of kill the targets and those that you really need to. So maybe by being charismatic, it's going to help me to justify trying to talk my way out of your sort of run-of-the-mill sort of common encounters possibly okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to write down here personality charismatic hope that's spelled right okay now we have to choose one of the questions and answer in terms of our background so what's the worst situation they've talked themselves out of or what interest or hobby do they often bring up in conversation? All right, let's let's try this. The worst situation they've talked themselves out of. Let's say um, when Locke's Gill was a lot younger uh, and had money to burn because he was a new nomad, very successful. Uh, there was a time when he parted with a number of young. Kuda of the opposite gender, opposite sex. And he later found out through the guild, he found out that these Kuda ladies, I don't know whether you'd call them ladies, these Kuda of the feminine variety were the daughters of a prominent crime lord on his home planet. And a number of these 
daughters got pregnant. Now, when, well, God, how to create, I'm improvising a story here. When the crime lord found out, Locke's Gill, yeah, my character, managed, God knows how, but managed to convince the crime lord that the person responsible was actually his previous target. So he's managed to convince his crime lord that unknowingly he's helped him out by getting rid of this, like I say, his previous target, and he's made up this story where the target was the one who did this. But in the back of his mind, he knows that he is responsible, so that could come back and bite him, possibly, depending on how the story goes, and that he's got potentially lots and lots of baby fish, <laughs> baby baby cuda in a crime lord's family. Ooh, okay, that, that sounds pretty decent. I mean, it sounds like a, a recipe for disaster later on, possibly, but we're going with that, right. So we've done that. That is essentially everything we need for the Nomad. Uh, again, I'll, I'll, fill in, I'll fill in the rest of the details off camera. But we do now have to create the contract. We've got to find out about the target, the planet, and everything else. So, let's do that now. Uh, okay, so roll for species and choose a name. Uh, I think for that one we have to use the... Actually, this is going to be for the first the first mission of the trilogy, so it needs to be from the other book, because now we're the first in the trilogy, the first mission or the first target is using the Taras. So target number okay, so the target I'll do in pencil so I can easily change it for the second mission. Right. So the target is the first target for our first episode, a Kimano amphibious. Okay, so species, uh, Kimano amphibious. Okay, and the name, six, Tas Akbo. Okay, Tas Akbo. All right. So we've done that. What's next? Uh, roll for their personality, considering how this detail would be posted on a bounty. Okay. So, personality. We're rolling a d6. Again, I'm using the notorious one here because the first game will be in notorious. We go two. Skittish, nervous, and tense. Skittish sounds good. What do they worry is going to go wrong again? What small item do they carry to provide some comfort? Um, I think skittish could work. So this guy is like paranoid that somebody's following him all the time kind of thing. So skittish. Okay. Uh, what else? What else? Planet, faction. One of the faction's reasons for posting the bounty. Okay, so we can do that. All right, so we've done the personality. So this guy is sort of paranoid. <laughs> uh, roll for the planet where the story takes place again first the first first part of a trilogy is in notorious so we're rolling and planets are six okay there's only six to choose from okay so the planet is planet two talus the desert planet uh, where is it over here planet name uh, Talus, and it's a desert planet. Okay. Again, I'll, I'll write all this information down afterwards because we have to make a note of the predominant species, the destinations, and everything else, and the factions. Um, Targ Cartel is controlling, Old Empire is challenging, and the Mystic Order is minor. I think the Mystic Order is linked with the Coven. Okay. All right, well, I'll, like I say, I'll write down all the details here off camera, ready for the first game. Uh, what else do we need to know? 
Choose a faction that's present on the planet as the client. Um, well, in my background, I think it was my scar. Was it the scar? Let's have a look. I think it was the scar. It said that my weapon was the type... I worked a lot with the Mystic Coven. And I think the Mystic Coven is linked with the Mystic Order. Let me just double check before I make a mistake. Planets, factions, okay. Mystic Coven is linked or allied with the Mystic Order. So that makes, kind of makes sense. So I'm going to choose the Mystic Order as being the client faction. Simply because as I was generating the background, I, I seem to have that link with the Mystic Coven. Okay. So that's that done. Choose a faction. Choose one of the faction's reasons for posting the bounty. Okay, so we go to the Mystic Order. Bump. All right, reasons for bounty. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm not gonna pick, I'm gonna make it random. Four. The target kidnapped a promising young apprentice of the Mystic Order. Ooh, okay. All right. So, Tas Akbo, this amphibian Kimano, very skittish, very paranoid, kidnapped a promising young apprentice of the Mystic Order. Now, kidnapped? So maybe, maybe it's a good idea to keep this person alive, because maybe, we, maybe he hasn't killed this apprentice, so we need to find out where the apprentice is. So, maybe I need to make sure that I just capture this guy. And not kill him. Okay, that makes sense. And that is the target information done. The contract is done. That's all done. That's that. And I think once I've again, once I've filled out all the details, yeah, that's it for that. All right. So what I'll do is off camera, I will fill in the details here with the basic rolls that I made off the tables. And what I'll do is get this all ready. I think um, I'll see if I can put this onto the, the fillable PDF, make it look nice. If not, what I'll do is I'll just write it handwritten, but again, I'll try and make it look a bit nicer than this. But yeah, we have our Nomad, we have our target for our first mission in our trilogy. And that will be in the next video. So, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not going to do an overview of this game. What we're going to do is learn or see the rules in action as we play. So here we've seen how to create a character. We've also seen how to create the contract, the target. In the upcoming videos, which will be the trilogy, uh, first mission, this one, Taz Akbo, is going to be our uh, first mission, Notorious. For the second mission, once we've completed this one, we will then generate a new contract using Outsiders. Oh, another thing is when we do the trilogy method, after every mission we get bonuses. You know, we can get upgrades, which you know gives us a little bit more power. But yeah, and then the third mission will be a combination of both where we kind of roll to see which tables we roll on. But yes, guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh... The mission videos will be coming soon. Uh, what I'll probably do is I'll probably put this video out and then maybe the missions on consecutive days afterwards. We'll see how it goes. Right. Thanks again for watching. Until the next video, please take care. Stay safe. Cheers.